He was twice world champion, an Olympic champion in 2004, and then he seemed to die. But he came back from the dead last year in 2012 to claim one of the most unexpected Olympic gold medals. Felix Sanchez is our guest on Inside Athletics this week. Let me take you back to 2012. You showed up in my office in Miramar, Florida. And I remember thinking in the back of my mind, wow, Felix has done very well. He's been world champion twice, and he's been Olympic champion. I wonder when he's going to retire. There's not any, there was no indication at that point to me that you were headed to being Olympic champion. What is it, even though I'm supposed to know this stuff for a living, what is it that I couldn't possibly have known when you were in my office that afternoon? The commentators and spectators alike, you guys just see the result. You don't see the work going into it. You don't see the excuses, the whys. Why isn't he in form? Why is he out of shape? Why is he running slow? And I, every year, even though I was in the top 10, I was making world championship finals, there was always a reason or a setback during my training. And my coach instilled in me, I mean, I was getting to, I went undefeated for four years. Mm -hmm. And I had eight year span where I didn't win a major race. So as confident as I was, and it, it, as, much, I, as much as I thought I was the best hurdler there was in this generation, my confidence was dwindling down to, why am I still doing this almost? And he was kind of like, just relax. If you can only stay healthy one complete season, mm. you'll be able to show them and yourself what you still have in the tank. In, in the foreigner hurdles, you get exposed really quickly. There's no <laughs> corners to cut. You have to do the base work. You have to do the technique work. Right. You have to do the rhythm work. You have to do the speed work. It's a total combination of everything for you to reach a success, successful platform and be consistent. So we went back. I had to fix some things, started cycling more. Okay. And because, I mean, from the knees down, I was a wreck. My calves, my Achilles, my shins. Uh, I couldn't do those six to eight mile runs anymore. So I had to cycle, I had to supplement. I was getting older, I would feel my muscle just getting more soft. So I had to get in the gym where I, the first four years of my career, I didn't get in the gym. So a lot of different things you have to sit back humbly as good as you thought you did and ex as good as you trained and time-wise. You have to reassess what you're doing, almost reinvent yourself to adapt to your new body. And we successfully did that in 2012. Now, you came out of USC as the NCAA champion, and a lot of people probably expected immediate results for this kid. It took you a little while to figure it out, and then from 01 to 04, you went on this amazing streak of 43 consecutive races, Olympic and world champion. In that gap, what had to change from being the college hurdler to the pro hurdler? In college, I did more, most foreign hurdlers in college, do, you mostly train with the quarter milers, yeah. do a lot of speed work, a little hurdling. And when I left college, I trained myself for a little bit, and then I met my coach now, which I've been with him for about 14 years. And he enlightened me to uh, the lack of need for speed. And as a foreign hurdler, you need more balance hmm. and more technique to so, so that you not only decelerate with less with uh, the condition work, but if you're more efficient technically, you you can hold that speed for longer. I mean, I mean, you see me run and everyone think, oh, you have an amazing finish. And I really don't. I'm just decelerating less huh. than most of the other athletes. I'm not picking up because, I mean, you obviously you see my touchdowns. And I'm gradually slowing down, opposed to some of the guys, they're going out really hard and then dying terribly coming home right. and or holding on. There were few people in the entire Olympic Games that were as emotional as you were. Tell us why that was. Well, there was various reasons. One being that I dominated my event for so long. And in our sport, you rarely see a comeback. You see yeah. someone Try maybe and feel the comeback. <laughs> starting from the bottom and yeah. make it up and win a gold and retire. Or you see someone like myself, and you come in, and you win everything, and you win gold, mm -hmm. and you fade away into nothing, and you get forgotten about. And I had reached that point that you show up to meets, and they're like, well, why is he still here? Why is he still running? <laughs> yeah. And like I said, my coach, he still believed I still had it. And there was, a, there was a reason why I wasn't at top form. And I would see glimmers and just signs of it when I would show up to the championship 
only with the B standard and still make the final and beat guys who have run 47 already. You had a good championships season. in 2011. Yes, Except I got you crashed the first hurdle. Yeah. You might have meddled in that race. Yes, yes. And in 2009, I crashed the first hurdle as well. Um, messed my steps up in 11, came fourth. Um, strained my hamstring in the, in the final in 05. And there, there was always signs that, okay, if you got everything right, you could still compete with these guys. No one, luckily for me in my event, there, there were no Usain Bolts that yeah. someone just started running amazing time. There were some good guys. I mean, Rashawn came and, and Angelo was up and down. Yeah, Rashawn Karan was up well. and Karan was up and But no one was consistently dominating. The talent has been there. they just been inconsistent. So it, it left the door open for someone like me who was consistent, who was very talented. Getting on the podium, obviously, after I was buried pretty much in the track and, and kind of people were wondering why I was still in it. And one, I had the passion for it still. And two, I, after 2008, I, you didn't know, but... I don't think anybody knew. No, you didn't know that I, like every year when I got to a championship, it played back in my mind what you said. Uh, when I crossed the line and I, I got on my knees and I was um, I was very sad because I had my, my grandmother passed and you said mm -hmm. um, I'll never forget because I replayed it over you said I think that's the last we've seen of Felix Sanchez and I almost retired mm. and I, obviously family and everyone convinced me to keep going I was like, okay one more year then win one more medal uh, then I can retire. And then 2009, I hit the first hurdle and just missed out. And then I was like, oh, okay, well, one more year. And it just came on, kept one year at a time. And in 2011, I got fourth. I was like, ah, oh, well, one more Olympics. And right. then got to the Olympics and getting on the podium and, and, and having obviously dedicated it to my grandmother and, and being so emotional just throughout the season. I remember there were times I would just go into practice thinking about what it would mean to win and how bad I wanted to win. Like, before practice, I'm like tearing up. Right. And when you have someone that passionate about what they're doing, um, and as talented as I was, you give your all, hoping for the best. And when when you get your opportunity, you seize it. And and when I seize it, and and I reflect back at that night, and you know sometimes depending on when you run, you don't get to get on the podium until the next day. That's right, right. And I believe had I went home, I went back to the village. You'd have been okay. Um, and come back the next day and got my medal, it would have been a, a proud Felix Sanchez. I reflect back and I'm thinking, like my grandmother, and then it starts sprinkling, raining. Yeah. That's how it starts. And it was like, oh, it's like I felt like, okay, she was tearing up. And, and I like still get emotional now. Uh, it's when someone means that much to you and you've put so much into it, and you finally achieve it, it's, it's a special moment. World champion twice, Olympic champion twice. And as you said, you came back literally from the dead and you're Olympic champion. So how come you're still running? My goal initially when I started track and field was to win a medal, gold okay. medal. After I did that, I won two world championship medals. Then I started doing my history, looking up what hasn't been done because obviously when you start the foreign hurdles you know who the best was Ed Moses. Edward Moses Kevin Young has a world record but he in all due respect he had two years right. that was about it 92 and 93 yeah so he's kind of eliminated because I never I didn't feel I, I had the ability to go 46 seconds so I, I, that was never an issue to me so I was like how do I become the best okay the winning streak 100 well, that ended four years into it. <laughs> <laughs> Still um, makes you the second, yes. second longest streak ever, though. Yes. Um, two Olympic titles never even came into mind. Right. After my second world title, I said, okay, the only thing I can do to separate myself from Moses, to do what he could never do or never had the chance to do, was win three world titles. And that's what's got me to this point. Like, okay, one more world championship. We can win this third title. We can do something that no other French hurdler has done. And if I can win a gold, I would be the only one who can win three, three, world, titles. three world titles. What you just said begs in the obvious question. Why is it so important for you to be the greatest when it's all said and done? I'm a competitive person. And <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yes. And I can't.
came to love track and field later. I was a baseball player. I could care less about track and field. I didn't know anything about track and field history right. until I was about three or four years into it. A couple years in high school and then my first two years in junior college. Then I started like, okay, what is this and what are times and who is this and who's the champion now? And I started doing my research on it. And 14 years into it, I want to be the greatest ever. Uh, I've had the longest career of any 400 hurdler. And you put that much time into arguably the hardest discipline ever. Right. And you have the opportunity to become one of or the greatest ever. Why not? I'm not often wrong, but I was very happy to be dead wrong about what I thought you were capable of doing last year. And uh, I, got a little, I got a little teary myself watching you uh, on that podium. So uh, congratulations on all your success and uh, all the best to you. I hope you accomplish your goals in, uh, in Moscow and beyond. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.